is the world's fastest LLM inference engine. Imagine you have got 407 tokens per second. For one second, you're going to get 407 tokens. This is by far the fastest LLM inference engine where you can go ask a question. For example, I can go say, write a joke about Elon Musk and make it really big. So this is the question that I've asked and you can see that it took couple of, I couldn't even see that it took less than a second and then it generated all these tokens for you. And this is the mixtral of experts, mixtral mixture of experts, eight x seven billion parameter model. How is this happening? That is exactly what this video is. This is going to talk about a new system, a new engine, a new company, Grok. You might not have heard about this company unless until you are an Elon fanboy, you would have heard Grok with K as an AI company that Elon started. But this is not that company. This is a completely different company started by ex Google engineers who worked on tensor processing unit. So if you know Google has got something called TPU, other than CPU, other than GPU, Google has something called TPU. So those people left the company and started a new company. First benchmark, the public benchmark, Grok has demonstrated 18 times faster LLM inference performance on any scales LLM performance leaderboard. It's an independently verified item. So it's not from Grok. So for example, if you go to this particular repository, LLM perf leaderboard from any scale, you can see that Grok has got 185. That is, that is what Grok has got. The, the number of requests that you can see in one second, like so output tokens throughput per second, at that time Grok was 185 while everybody else was here. So there is another important metric, which is time to respond, like the first token. And Grok is like 0.22, any scale comes closer, but Grok is 0.22. So how is this possible? How is it that a company that you hardly heard about, it's not NVIDIA, it's not together.ai, it's not VLLM, uh, what this company, something you have not heard about, how is this company managed to have a built in production one of the fastest, or I shouldn't say one of the fastest, the fastest LLM inference engine. Now there are two parts to it. First thing is this company does not build its own LLM. So basically they host some LLMs available, Llama 2, Mixtral 8X, Mixtral, Mixtral 7 billion. So they don't build LLMs. So they're not an LLM company. They are not AI product building company. They're here for you to facilitate. So they're letting you run AI models, letting you use it for inference. That's first thing. Right now you cannot train. So only inference is what you can do at this point. Okay. So that's first thing. Second thing is what is this company? This company is actually a company that has created its own inference engine. It's not a CPU based inference engine. It is not a graphical processing unit, a GPU based inference engine. In fact, what they are calling it as is an LPU inference engine, language processing unit. This could be a, a little bit of marketing term, I would say. They must have seen large language models spiking up. So they're like, okay, let's call it LPU. But at the end of the day, what their paper suggests, they published a paper sometime back and their paper actually suggests that what they have launched is a tensor streaming processor. So now they call it LPU but previously you can see that they called it a tensor streaming processor for accelerated deep learning workloads. I, and the way they have built this is kind of mind blowing. And you would see like why I don't, honestly speaking, I don't completely understand this. I might actually do a part two video of this with somebody who understands this better, or I would put more time in reading this, but in a nutshell, you have got a chip. So a chip typically is organized like this. So where the components are uh, stick, stuck together, so you can see individual like the sections are heterogeneous, but overall the chip itself is homogeneous. But what they are saying with Grok or the tensor streaming processor TSP is, they're going to make homogeneous functional units. So every unit has got its own purpose and they're going to design the data flow in such a way that the multi-processing or parallel processing that is required for deep learning will happen in the same data flow, the order flow that they have got. 
see it doesn't mean grok is not without any problem we'll quickly discuss some of the problems but what they have done is super impressive they've completely taken their mind out of existing chips they're like okay i'm not i'm not trying to build something on top of cpu i'm not trying to build something on top of T gpu what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to bring in a completely new perspective that's what here is so you can see in this paper we introduce tensor streaming process this paper came about like 2020 it's not even new. I'm, I'm quite surprised like not a lot of people have heard about this company. In fact, like I didn't hear about this company. But since I heard about this company, since then I've been watching the videos of the CEO uh, and I learned a little bit. So in this paper, we introduce uh, the tensor streaming processor, TESP architecture, a functionally sliced micro architecture with memory units interleaved with vector and matrix deep learning functional units in order to take advantage of the data flow locality of deep learning operations. So this from ground up has been designed with deep learning or matrix multiplication or numerical computing or HPC high processing computing in mind. And this is this is the fundamental. They have taken CP out of the mind. They have taken GP out of the mind. They have taken accelerated computing out of the mind. They have gone very basic something around like FPGA. They've gone like so basic and then they decided to build something from ground up with deep learning in mind. And that is how they have created a, a functionally sliced micro architecture. So everything is a functional slice. As you can see, they have got the IF section, then they've got the other section, then they've got the other section, then they've got the other section. So these are different functions within a chip and they have organized it in such a way that the data flow is kind of like you can see the data flow like this and this provides this chip to be more efficient in calculating. So TSB is built based on two key observations. Machine learning workloads exhibit abundant data parallelism and that's exactly why people use GPU. Uh, you, you can't do data parallelism a lot on CPU. That's exactly why GPUs exist. Accelerated computing exists. Nvidia stock has like almost grown like 500% in the last I don't know God knows how many years. So this is exactly why GPUs rule the world. And what they're saying is that, okay, we have observed this, which can be readily mapped to tensors in the hardware. So the data parallelism can be readily mapped to tensors in the hardware. A simple and a deterministic processor with producer consumer streaming pro stream programming model enables precise reasoning and control of hardware components, achieving good performance and power efficiency. What is what is this deterministic processor? See, there are certain programming languages or the way you do things, you know what the outcome you're going to get it. A very, um, very, very naive example if I have to give. In a static programming language, you know what is the argument that you're going to receive. Probably a string, probably a number, probably integer, probably float. So in a dynamic language, you would not, you would not know that. That's, that's the problem with, let's say, Python without Pydantic. But if you use Python with Pydantic, you would exactly would have specified what is the data type that you want to get, what kind of output you're going to get. So that is a deterministic system. So what they're saying is that a simple and a deterministic processor with producer consumer stream programming model enables precise reasoning and control of hardware components, achieving good performance and power efficiency. So the TSP is designed to exploit parallelism inherent in machine learning workloads including instruction level memory concurrency data and model parallelism. So what you are seeing here is at an instruction level, they are exploring memory concurrency data and model parallelism while guaranteeing determinism by eliminating all reactive elements in the hardware. And uh, they're saying what kind of reactive elements that could um, affect the determinism. And they have tested it with, uh, you know, ResNet 50 because this is a 2020 paper, I think. They were not so much into deep learning uh, LLMs back then, but they've said like, okay, they've developed their own chip. And uh, so for some reason, the founder or uh, the CEO of this company is very passionate about the US. So one of the interviews that I saw is like, he's like, we have designed it in the US. We have fabricated the fabs in the US. We have, uh, we have created the chip in the US. The data center is in the US. So he was like very much into US, but I'm making this video from India, but I'm still passionate about this company. I'm always happy to see somebody coming to break a monopoly with a mind blowing result. So that's, that's one of the reason I decided to make this video. So they're fastest and you know why they are fastest because 
they've completely redesigned the chip from ground up to have a functional a slice so you have a functional slice rather than a, a heterogeneous fun unit um, that ultimately makes up a homogeneous unit so they've got homogeneous functions like every function is important so with that said now let's quickly discuss what is grox the biggest advantage we know the biggest advantage is their speed the number of tokens that they output in one second nobody nobody does it nobody is there until now at least until this point maybe if sam altman gets us 7 trillion dollars uh, from uh, i don't know from bunch of investors let's call it maybe you might get a chip like this but at this point nobody in production outputs 490 tokens for one second this is absolutely insane so you can go ahead and ask any question what is fab in um, ic so i assume that it would say that ic means chip so fab is like okay integrated circuit fab is short form for fabric and you can see the speed it's real time i'm not editing this video i'm not speeding it up it is real time it is a mixture of experts running at a ridiculous speed so nobody is as close as them now you might naturally think uh, i guess maybe uh, they are very expensive a uh, what of they are expensive so that's 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 a question that you it might come to your mind so if you see one of the leading players in the market which is together.ai and their mixture of exports model with point um with um, 1 million token you have to pay 0.6 us dollar and on the other hand if you see grok so grok offers a much lesser cost for you at uh, at a much higher speed so in fact it is 0.29 somewhere around 3 so 0.27 so for the same model that the leading industry player together the ai offers at 0.6 while grok with much better speed gives you much better cost that is exactly their pitches if you see their pitch they are saying that grok says it can deliver 100x better bang for the buck at 10x the speed of llama 2 inference so you're going to get 100x a return on investment at the speed of 10x improvement and while this is very fancy this is very nice now i'll tell you what is a problem one problem is you know it's not nvidia it's not like apple can you know churn out iphone grok can churn out chips at least at this point i don't know what is their capacity what like what is their throughput on generating these chips they're selling these chips you can go buy the chips like if you want to buy uh it's uh, you either you can request the apa access or if you want to buy you have a uh, different ways they are selling the chip through their uh, partner that somebody that they have got so you can go buy it so you have a way for you to go buy that thing so that is possible but the problem starts is this chip that we are talking about you need a lot of these chips for you to get the performance that you are getting for the benchmark that we saw grok linked together 576 of grok chips why because one chip has got approximately 200 is memory 200 mb is that's it now you are dealing with 70 billion parameter model and one chip has got only 200 mb almost memory it's it's not even like uh, hbm it's not a uh, high bandwidth memory so you need to now use a grok that means uh, you need to combine a lot more chips together for you to make sure that it works it runs a large language model so for that purpose first you need a lot of these grok chips and they have used 576 okay now that 576 goes into nine nodes and uh, these are like um, let's say eight node and one is redundant space and all these things now on the other hand if you see in the nvidia world it is one machine so whatever you are doing here all you need is one h100 so in nvidia you buy one machine in grok you need to buy 576 or in this case let's say eight nodes and there is a price difference of course you are saving money so that's what grok says it says it takes nvidia gpu somewhere on the order of 10 joules to 30 joules to generate tokens in a response while grok setup takes about 1 joule to 30, 3 joules per token so that is 10x speed of inference at 1/10th of the cost while the cost is cheap 
you need to buy more machine so that comes with the own cost right you if you for example if something goes faulty then you need to replace it with something else then you need to expect them to produce something so there is more number of grok devices that you need or versus one fat nvidia server and you are also having more space that you uh, more space you need and all these things so this is the only disadvantage that i see at this point and there have been like a lot of arguments on hacker news if you go and then see you would see whether an hbm high bandwidth memory is helpful not helpful um what is the what is the limitation and uh, there are a lot of these uh, discussions going on um whether it can support lora whether it can support fine tune whether it can support training or is it only uh, inference engine i think despite all these things like if like if i if you ask my opinion like the the primary reason i decided to make this video is you don't have a lot of chip makers I, the, sam altman knows that very well like the reason why nvidia stock has like ridiculously spiked up like you cannot imagine like for example nvidia stock if you go nvidia stock it, the growth of nvidia stock for the last 5 years is 1700% i don't know how many stocks during the same period has grown this much and a very good amount of this growth can be very well attributed to ai or the craze about accelerated computing gpus i know you have got rock um, and other options to run deep learning models within amd but you don't have a lot of other options nvidia sells gpus like cakes uh, starting from crypto until now it's 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 nobody could touch and i think in that market if somebody is there and who is not like let's say uh, relying on tsmc or uh, uh, the taiwanese chip maker for making the chip if they have got the fab they've got the design they've got all the things in one country let's say the us and they've managed to run this and give it production and i don't know if they are burning cash like i don't i don't understand like what is the profit that they are going to make are they going to even make a profit because this is api cost is a competitive market but despite all these things i think this is an engineering marvel and because of that reason i truly respect the team that managed to put together something that is mind blowing completely radical and the speed is like unbelievable and if you appreciate this let me know in the comment section otherwise you can go try out grox demo right now in this link which i'll link it in the youtube description and if you understand this stuff much better than me which i guess most of you might do please let me know in the comment section and educate me better thank you so much see you in another video happy prompting